uh, to tell the truth, this is one of the most common mistaken in the uh, area because owners connect a single one SDK ad network to their app and they expect the big revenue increasing. So we see that the most profitable one because of the very high CPMs is the rewarded and inter interest initial one. When it comes to the Asia, I will start with the also Applevin AdMob with machine and Unity ads. So it's the most performing one in this region. Uh, and when it comes to the Middle East, so it's also Applevin AdMob Unity ads and with machine. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Aptica Talks podcast. Today I have a terrific guest with us, Elmira Kenya, Business Development Manager at Easy Monetization. El Elia, welcome to the show. How are you today? Thank you for inviting me to the podcast. <laughs> Great. So before we start, please uh, tell us more about yourself, uh, your career path in the industry and what Easy Monetization is about. Okay, thank you. Uh, so my name is Elmira Kenya. You could call me like e Ella. So my work focuses on business development of the service of user monetization. We help the publishers or app owners to set up, to set up ad monetization and display in-app ads in order they could generate additional revenue from the existing audience segment and their audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about your careers? So I've been working in Yandex more than two years. So I started the career path in Yandex actually, and I was like as growth manager. So I was accounting the top publishers in the industry. That is why I have like the knowledge of how the big companies performing in this industry. And that is why I moved to the business development in order to, I could like uh, to develop the business of the easy monetization service. So judging from the activity of easy monetization, it's pretty obvious that we are going to dive deep into in-app advertising uh, today. And uh, we see that this industry keeps growing in scope and keeps developing. As for example, in Aptica, we see that the numbers of advertisers uh, and the applications uh, that actually uh, monetize uh, through advertising uh, keeps growing. Uh, in 2021, we had around uh, 15,000 uh, applications. In 2022, around 32K, if I'm not mistaken. And in this year already, we have more than 50,000 applications with um, uh, in-app advertising monetization integrated. So, and I believe that this number will be growing even uh, further. So numbers here speak for themselves. Uh, therefore, do you feel this growth within easy monetization? Do you see this trend? Okay, I totally true and agree with your opinion because in easy monetization, we have like a very great number of connections with ad networks. Right now we see that the market of ad networks is also like growing as the number of apps who use like in-app advertisement uh, during this, this period of time. And when it comes to the demand, so each ad network is trying to increase the demand all over the world. For example, like two years ago, we have the ad networks, which was like focusing only on Asia, for example, region. But now we see that they want to increase the demand in not only in Asia, but in tier one countries. So uh, we see that the increasing in this area also based on ad network demand. When it comes to the figures, so yeah, in 2022, the total mobile app spend surpassed like two, two, thousand, two billion even dollars. So mobile ad spend is 66.48% uh, as far as I remember. When it comes to the app store spend is already 33.2%. So, for example, when we see the example of Voodoo Ad and in-app purchases revenue right now, in 2023, we see that in-app purchases revenue of them is 2 million, while ad revenue is already 7 million. Mm. Yeah, the gap is huge here, 2 and 7. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I guess it's crucial to talk about in-app advertising and just to keep a pulse on the industry because it keeps evolving and I guess it, it keeps uh, developing. Um, okay, so I believe that within easy monetization, you work with various formats. Uh, and uh, so based on your experience, uh, what formats are better for what uh, app genres? Mm -hmm. So you are totally also true at this point, because different app types have very and best performance performance. When it comes first of all to interstitial format or banner, so it feeds runners, hyper casual and utilities. Now we see on our side that more than uh, 50% of the remuneration paid to partners by our ad network 
false on this format because this format really do work well and doesn't interrupt any user experience when, for example, users progress by step by step in the user the user journey. And for example, when users move to the next level of the game or switch from one content to another one, it's also the suitable one. Uh, when it comes to rewarded, it's the most uh, suitable uh, to our opinion for strategy, shooters and multiplayer game. So this ad format works for both end users and owners. Why? Because users like this format because uh, they like it's and um, the acti the activity with this format is very gamified. So is, is the result in perks such as in-game currency, bonus, lives, and so on. Besides the mechanic of the game. Uh, besides the user who gets one reward might return for another. Usually rewarded videos show some of the highest CCPM rates on the gaming industry. Advertisers also like them because it's the, it's the one format which is the least annoying and all the existing. When it comes to the apps outside of gaming, you can, for example, leverage rewarded ads for unlocking access to the content. It may be like in music, articles, books, dating profile. So there, there is a lot of rooms to create creative. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one yeah, and native uh, is feel the most suitable for news apps. So they're usually like placed on the bottom or on the top of the screen. They may be the most popular format right now, but banners are less intrusive, especially for the free apps. Banners are also are excellent for the uh, apps with a shorter user session. When it comes to the native, the last one, so it's organically matched to the content of the app, like mimicking in a little. For example, it's also very suitable for social media or, for example, news cards, etc. And uh, what format is more profitable? So what figures do you see inside? So actually, it uh, very depends on the thematic of the game or, or, or the, of the application. So when it comes, for example, to the game, so we see that the most profitable one because of the very high CPMs is the rewarded and inter interstitial one. But for example, when we see the uh, application, which is more about the social media on use, it will be for sure a native or banner because the, the because of the session. Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, as we've mentioned several times, the interstitial, for me, it's uh, the intrusive one. Because when I play the game or when I use the app and I see this interstitial uh, without the skip option, it really gets on my nerves. Uh, so uh, I, I want to skip uh, this ad, but I don't have this option. So And I believe I'm not the only one with this problem. Uh, therefore, how the apps, how the publishers can mitigate the risks uh, of the high churn and at the same time uh, ensure um, that the user experience isn't ruined by the ads because I guess for them uh, profit and users are important uh, at the same level. So yeah, it's actually a very good question and it's uh, always always on the mind of our publishers. Uh, when our publisher go under the service of visualization, we always advise them to use like the cross uh, and the limit of time of like appearing the cross after two seconds from two seconds till four. And actually, it's very also important to know that ad each advertising network can exclude ad step, uh, topics. So when it comes to the user experience, it also can, for example, increase their retention rate. And not only because you can like block the content, which is not best match in the interest of your users. So but how do you follow the interest of the users? You have some uh, insider information. So this type of user likes uh, this type of content and mm -hmm. this, uh, how, mm -hmm. how, how do you manage that? First of all, it's very important to see the, and gather feedback from your audience. So I love you, please allow your users to express their preferences regarding the ads on your application and always like look through the feedback on your store in order to understand if it suits your audience or not. Besides of that, in order, like, the user experience of your application will be really great. So find the ways to integrate the ads uh, with many formats with a minimal impact on user experience. Uh, so for example, in case it's a gameplay, uh, you can like use the rewarded ad because it's very like interesting for the user. For example, in case it's uh, the news and etc. You can use the banner native, which will be the most also suitable for this mechanic. Besides, I'll advise you to provide the skip option, for example, in order the user 
um, have the opportunity to skip ads after they're displayed for a specific time, two or four seconds. And the last one, I'd like to advise uh, to conduct always the testing with a different ad formats and types in order you could determine which ad types perform best on your user base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, A-B testing is everything. Yeah. So test everything. So yeah. Um, okay, so imagine I have the app uh, and I would like to monetize it. And the first thing uh, that I have in mind is advertising, in-app advertising. And I want to uh, have some networks uh, integrated into the app. And uh, while thinking about that, uh, I have so many challenges to uh, consider different SDK, uh, different problems uh, with settings. Uh, and um, then... Uh, and I see also that the average number of uh, ad networks mm -hmm. in top 15 uh, apps, for example, it's four. So, but I want to avoid that and I want to choose one network to cover my needs. Is it possible nowadays or one network isn't the option? Uh -huh. This is a very great uh, question. Um, and each indie publisher like faced with this issue in order to understand if it's okay to have a one SDK. And... Uh, to tell the truth, this is one of the most common mistaken in the uh, area because owners connect a single one SDK ad network to their app and they expect the big revenue increasing. But you need to understand that the more networks you connect to your application, the higher competition in ad impressions. So there is, uh, there will be uh, like an increase in your ECPMs then. Therefore, like the service, we recommend connecting multiple ad networks or using even mediation platform in order they could let you to display ads from different ad networks, which have like a huge number of demand and increase your CPMs and then come in revenue. So the more net ad network you connect to your applications and there is better. So you should like take in mind the geography of your application, the formats, advertising database and CPMs on each ad network. And based on this data, you need to understand what ad networks will be the most suitable for you on your application. But actually there are a lot of like figures you need to have in mind. And it also depends on the um, the range of your application. So in case it's a little application, you need also to take into consideration that a lot of SDKs, it's not all the, the great result and like the conclusion. But in case you have the medium size application, you need to consider the connecting more than or, or even five SDKs in order your CPMs will be like increased. Yes, uh, yesterday we had a webinar with UGC Ninja and we were discussing mm -hmm. also the uh, ad networks uh, and the monetization strategies and I checked the United States uh, market and uh, if we take the top uh, 15 applications, on average they have nine networks. So yeah, not uh, like f four worldwide, but in the states they have they have nine networks. So that yeah, that's the huge number. So uh, and to talk uh, numbers and to be more specific, uh, what revenue growth uh, can I expect if I have several networks? I'd like to put your attention one more time that the number of, of ad networks is really depend depends on the size of your application. In case you have a small application with less than 1,000 uh, DAO, there is no need to connect nine SDKs. For example, if you have the application more than 10 uh, sounds DAO, so uh, it's, it's really, um, there is a, an option to see and to dive into and understand if it's really suits you. When it comes to the figures, actually it's very difficult to understand uh, how much uplift you can expect. But based on our data, we have our publishers who had, for example, an audience in Eastern Europe and they have only one ad network. And then we connected five from five to six, as far as I, understand, as far as I remember. And the uplift was uh, up to 40% of revenue. When it comes to the ARPU, it was increased by like 90%. But it really depends on the project and the application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... So judging you from uh, your figures, uh, it's worth it to have uh, several networks, at least two, three, if you have a small app. But mm -hmm. what challenges yeah. uh, can I expect uh, with the growing number of ad networks? Um, what mm -hmm. to keep in mind here? Yeah, you're totally true uh, uh, at this point. So, and uh, 
using several SDKs uh, lead you to main issues. For example, before like integrating the mediation and several ad networks, you need to understand which country the add-ins your your is in. After that, you need to understand what mediation you need to like integrate. After this topic, you need to understand what the basis to choose the mediation ad networks. When it comes to the ad networks, it's really uh, you you do need to understand what audience and split by geography do you have. For example, in case you have the audience from Eastern Europe or for Tier One or Asia, so each ad network has their own demand in a specific region. So before the um, adding the ad networks, you need to understand what ad networks ha- has the demand. So after that, you need to connect the advertising network, which you like chosen before. Continue them manually by installing the SDKs. Each uh, of the ad network has their own instruction, own rules, and etc. Uh, then you need to log in into the the interface to to agree with their contract rules, fill out the payment details, and to get like mm, to get paid money separately by overcoming the payout the sharehold of each ad network. Um, when you configure all the entire mediation before. So you need to configure each network separately and configure all this on application side. After that, the technical integration, you need always to see the, your performance. Uh, after two weeks of performance, you need to see what is uh, how is your waterfall is going on. For example, some CPMs can be like, should be changed. That is why each two weeks you need to optimize your waterfall position and in the eCPMs floors in order your eCPMs and approval constantly like growing. And Actually, it's a big deal for publishers, and that is why the big companies had had their own like um, groups of people who are like focused in order to increase uh, the ARPU ECPM so revenue from the uh, waterfall positioning and the setting up the mediation system at all. Yeah, I guess my uh, mind is going to blow now uh, with all these steps <laughs> to keep in mind. So that's why I guess the publishers they need easy monetization to assist with all these steps because uh, it's better to focus on your app uh, on the development of your app rather than on thinking uh, about the optimization uh, Mm -hmm. of the uh, monetization strategy so what specifically can you help with uh, or inside uh, easy monetization what services do you provide Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah exactly so when the publisher is going on into the (laughs) Uh, ad monetization stuff and the setting the mediation at network like they faced the many issues uh, and they really do not help yeah uh, in case the publisher had the, the the money i could say that in order to have the the group of people who will be the foc- in the focus on this area so it's okay in case it's like the small team or like for example they do not have any resources that is why there is like in the market uh, the solution and the services as easy monetization as I said earlier, easy monetization is a service which can help app owners to set up ad monetization at all and displaying ad ads to generate additional maximum even revenue from the existing their audience. So we help first of all to set up the ad monetization for the partners app and help to maxi- maximize their revenue. So our team will analyze your audience and based on your uh, and based on the information about your application. Our team will help you to maximize the revenue by waterfall positioning, bidding, adding, and setting up all the stuff which is connected with the mediation system. So besides the world, we'll like, uh, the team of our expertise will take care of this part of the process through all the time of like working with our service. The second point is that we guide partners through all the process. So after the setting up the application and the partner, we help them to achieve the continuous revenue growth. So from our side, you'll have like two uh, service manager. First of all, we'll be focuses on like the main question about the statistics, data, payouts, and etc. When it comes to the second manager, it will be like the technical lead who will help you with all the question about the integration, the trying to find the growth points and etc. in order uh, your team and our team will like guide the new growth opportunities to your e- to each your application. The third point that we help you to track the ad effectiveness and turn the set of sorts of waterfalls. So we'll do all the optimization setting on our side always, like it's continuously processed in order it could affect the growth of your eCPMs. The regular payouts, 
for example, when you like do everything as a self-service, you need to add each ad networks and then you have the payments separately from each ad networks. When you under the easy monetization service, we on our side aggregate all the payouts from all the connected ad networks and pay you ad revenue one per month. And there is no limit in the sharehold by each separate like ad, um, ad network will have like the only one sharehold based on our easy monetization service. Uh, and three more points. Uh, I suppose that it's very uh, important for each publisher. So you'll have the entry point, the single account on our interface. So you have the access to all advertising networks and statistics data in order you could dive into the analytics and understand what the performance is. Besides, you'll have all the data sep uh, which will be separate by monetizers, geography, CPMs, uh, fill rate, eCPMs, revenue, and etc. cetera. Uh, we provide step-by-step -step instructions in, uh, while integrating our SDKs into your application in order you could quickly switch from your solution into our and basically it reduces the time uh, for integration by two times. Mm, and I suppose that's all the main yeah, point. So that's not all, it's a lot actually. So you can help with many issues uh, while setting up the uh, networks and just uh, guiding through all these challenges that may arise um, for every yeah, publisher. Yeah, we're actually trying to focus that our team can be the part of the team of our publisher in order to my uh, manager from our side could really do help publishers to constantly growth and revenue in the CPMs. So we always try to find the new points of growth based on formats, like waterfall positioning, the settings, the floors, the CPMs, and etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if uh, there, are, there is someone among our listeners who has an app and just hesitating with the in-app advertising strategies, you, now you know who to contact. So who is your who is your main contact, contact and uh, who can help you with all this um, uh, turmoil of in-app advertising? So uh, before we were discussing uh, the ad networks and the region, so uh, there is one network for every region. I mean, um, the ad network that is more specialized uh, in a, a specific region. Uh, do you have any numbers, for example, uh, what network in what region has uh, the biggest traffic now? So, for example, if I, I am to choose, uh, uh, okay, four, uh, I have four focus regions and I need to choose one network for every region. So, what is the rating now? Okay. So, when it comes to the, I, I'd like to start with the Eastern Europe. So, first of all, it's Yandex Advertising Network, Applevin, Admob, Unity Ads. And one goal, so it's the most performing and, and like the net network that ha which has the highest demand in this region. So in case you like trying to find some like solution in a chosen uh, ad networks based on your application and you have the audience in Eastern Europe, so please pay attention on the Yandex advertising network, Applevin, Admob, Unity, and Vangel. When it comes to the Asia, I will start with the also Applevin, Admob, Bitmachine, and Unity ads. So it's the most performing one in this region. Uh, and when it comes to the Middle East, so it's also Uplevin, Admob, Unity, Ads, and Bid Machine. But I'd like to put your attention that, to tell the truth, uh, we have like in the Admob Advocate, like the global um, players, like Admob, Uplevin, and etc. But uh, when you are trying like to find the points of growth, you need also to try many, many like uh, additional ad networks which can help also to, to boost you, the CPMs. It's very important to put the attention of the kind of the demand. But for example, some ad networks have the branding on the on their side of the demand. So that is why these networks had like the highest CPMs. But you need like trying to find the on the specific region by yourself and try to test it on your inventory separately one by one. So it's better not to neglect the local ones, the smaller ones, and not to rely solely on the great players like Applovin or Unity. Yeah. Um, I'd like to also put your attention that yes, but in case your main point just to start monetizing your application by advertisement, 
and you don't want to like pay, um, pay a lot of time and your resources into the monetization like you can really use like three top uh, ad networks and that's all but in case you want like to try and to find the new ways for growing and then you need also to try testing new ones so yeah when it comes to the nap advertising uh, as from what i see there are many problems and many challenges and i believe there are many mistakes and uh, as you um, uh, manage uh, the in-app advertising on a daily basis, uh, could you please share maybe some frequent mistakes that the publishers uh, make so uh, some of our listeners could uh, learn from, uh, uh, from the mistakes of others and, and to avoid them in the nearest future? Mm, it's a good question. So first of all, but it depends on the size of your application. You don't need to use the single advertising SDK, as I said before. In case you have um, the medium size of your application, you need to try testing the mediation system and then the several ad network, which would help you to increase your CPMs and revenue then. The second point that you need like to uh, not to be ignoring about the SDK updates from the side of ad networks is really important point because first of all, the developers from our size always fix any bugs they found during like the launching. Second, that we add new features, which also can like boost your ECPMs and the revenue gain. The third one, it's very crucial that there are like common many rules of Google Play and app stores. And in order to be compliant with these rules, SDKs also like update the SDK version. And that is why it's really important to update, like to look through the updates points and then to update uh, the SDKs on um, your application. The third point uh, I'd like to pay your attention in is that uh, uh, there is no need to catch too many apps because ads because it's uh, very <clears throat> triggering the user, a customer journey uh, and the journey of your users under your application. So that is why you need always try to test the number of ads which may be the most like suitable way for your application and at the same time you get a really good feedback from your audience so please do uh, listen the feedback from your audience in order to understand if it's the catching of ads is completely okay or no mm, and the last one i'd like put your attention on the another error as a blocking too many ad categories uh, of course, it's for each publisher, it's very important uh, to have the advertisement in your application would be the most suitable for your audience and their, uh, for example, age range. For example, in case you have uh, just a great number of adults or kids, for sure you need uh, to block cat categories, which, for example, are uh, 80 plus, alcohol, and etc. But um, please do not block many uh, certain categories when you know that they are in they are appropriate for your product audience because it's also could decreases your ECPMs. Yeah, you can lose some demand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, by blocking too many categories. Yes, clear. Uh, yeah, there is this uh, fragile balance, I guess, between um, providing a good experience, good experience for your users, and uh, making more money. So you need to. Uh, just remain and keep this balance for sure um okay so um this industry keeps growing as we've uh, mentioned at the very beginning but what to expect um, from uh, 2024 for example what trends uh, to keep an eye on uh, what do you see currently mm -hmm. very tricky questions uh from our side we see that our mobile alternative stores are really growing in the uh, like the drivers for this industry uh, when it comes to the current Android trends, for first of all, there are Android devices without Google Play, Huawei, for example. App developers really want to monetize their apps on other platforms because it's like the kind of alternative revenue they gain. And the third one, the hyper competition with the Google Play Store is, is in the market because 92% of apps, uh, apps cannot get more than 10 uh, K plus downloads. 
Mm, so the vendors are developing their uh, own app store, like Samsung, Op, uh, Op Gallery, Get App, Xiaomi. So in case you want like to try to diversify your revenue or you're trying to find the new points of growth, please pay attention on the alternative store because right, like its industry is really growing. And I see that in the nearest future, we'll see like the great results in alternative stores. And within easy monetization, you support uh, uh, App Store, Google Play, mm -hmm. and other other platforms as well. Uh, yeah. So our service supports all the key alternative stores. First of all, Get Apps, Op Gallery, Amazon, uh, and some others. So in case the publisher have uh, the application in an alternative store, also we can help them to gain the maximum revenue from the application which is published there. So we can help you uh, to use the three formats of banner, rewarded, interstitial, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Uh What else to expect? Mm -hmm. So alternative store, yeah. Yes, actually, uh, the developers have to install the app at 60 file. Unfortunately, right now in the ad industry, it's not very like, it's unknown point. And not very famous one, uh, but it's really important in order you could ha have the additional demand from the connected networks. So first of all, I need to say what is that? So app at 60 file. Uh, app owners indicate a list of a dozen network and their partners that can sell the placement in the app. Usually the ad uh, network have like their, their direct demand and also like um, mm -hmm. additional demand in order the additional demand could like uh, performant in your application, you need to put the X60 file uh, <clears throat> into your inventory. So, <clears throat> so it's like the um, combination. I mean, interconnection between uh, several networks, right? For example, if you have uh, a plugin in installed, but this plugin can sell your demand to Vango, and for this connection, you need this uh, app ads txt. So uh, the ad network display ads from the direct advertising, as I said earlier, and the DSP networks. So that means that uh, the more advertisers complete to the right uh, to the place in order to display the ad, it will also the boost your CPM depending on the countries. So it's really do important for publisher to use app ads txt file. So as a result, the income from the monetization will be growing. Some DSP. Uh, networks use app at 60 file to check with the advertising network if they are authorized so such advertising network can display as in the app and do not purchase at impression if there is no app at 60 file so please put your uh, uh, please put uh, your attention into app at 60 file and its integration um while uh, you were explaining this uh, complex feature, uh, I was thinking about uh, the fact or about, um, I would say, the strategy the publisher should adhere to. For example, I'm developing an app now and uh, I know that in the future I will monetize my uh, app through the advertising. So should I think about the placements, about the networks, about all these features beforehand during the process of the app development or it's better to have an app ready and then just decide uh, with the paths you're going to take. So what's better here? Um, it's, it actually depends on the pattern of the publisher. Usually the publisher, you know, the, like before the um, launching the application, then they think about the unit, unit economy and they mm -hmm. like uh, expect that what percentage of their revenue will be like in-app purchases or ad monetization and in order to test before like the launching you need to uh, try to integrate the some formats to think about this what formats what countries what ecpms what that networks it could be given to you and then to start testing during the first uh, like two weeks before the launching in order you could understand if it's really suits your application your audience and etc but in case not, you see that something goes wrong, you need like to rethink and understand what's going wrong at the stage in order you have the time to rethink everything and to understand what is the most suitable way for you. Yeah, got it. Okay, so uh, I'm running out of question. So I guess we, we've discussed a lot of points to uh, digest. 
uh, if you have more questions about uh, moni uh, monetization and in-app advertising, uh, I will leave the contacts of uh, Elmira in the description block and uh, you can get in touch via LinkedIn or email. So it's been uh, great having you on the show today and thanks for all the insights and all the data you can follow easy monetization for more groundbreaking insights and of course Aptica uh, we have several reports uh, on the way uh, so you can check all the data and uh, analytics and uh, make sure to follow the podcast uh, and uh, to get other episodes with more experts so thank you Elmira one more time for being with us today <laughs>